Okay, and uh, this is on to another video. I think today I need to be to keep my mind busy, so I've been making all these videos, and also because I I'm trying to help other people that may be experienced the same things. Uh, anyway, so for those of you that didn't know, I am converting to Judaism and. Uh, I have a very troublesome relationship with the Catholic Church and uh, one of the things I kept keep on getting from my mother and this she always tell me even uh, as I was agnostic atheist is you'll always be a Catholic, you'll always be Christian, you were baptized and whatever nonsense. And I never liked the institution of the church, what it represented. So, I took upon myself to make an open letter to the Vatican Pope or the Catholic Church. And uh, I had to censor myself a little, just for your um, information. And I know I'm sitting on the floor now. But uh, the letter is quite long, and um, I am not used to do senza and anymore. And uh, so my my I want to keep. I have the nasty habit of sitting on my feet or uh, being uh, on my knees, and then the, my feet get numb, and I want to avoid numbness. So now I'm sitting because this is going to be. Quite a long video. So, um, to begin, actually, I should contact, put this in context, right? Uh, so, um, the thing is, I'm sick and tired of people telling me that even if I convert to Judaism, I will never be a Jew, I will always be a Christian Catholic, because my parents decided to put me on uh, unholy water. Uh, and uh, get it on my head and decide that I was a Catholic. Um, so um, I am asking the Pope to get me excommunicated from the church, uh, which basically translates as not being a Catholic anymore. There are several reasons for me wanting this. But this is mostly a statement against what the institution of the Catholic Church represents. And trust me, a lot of you won't like what I'm saying here, but if you knew the whole history of Christianity, you wouldn't be Christians and uh, you wouldn't support any Christian movements or any religions that derive from Christianity, including Islam and uh, Protestantism, and actually some Protestantism is actually much worse and more anti-Semitic than Catholicism. But since this is a kind of a resignation and a definite cutoff from the Catholic Church, I just briefly mentioned Protestantism in the context of what the Christianity did to protest Protestantism and the heavy influence Catholicism had on the entire European mindset. So um, this is by no means uh, an extensive uh, description of the atrocities of Christianity. This is just a, a, a little summary of uh, some of the reasons why I don't ha want to have my name associated to the Christian or Catholic churches. Um, but since I'm not affiliated to any other Christian movement and uh, I was only initiated into the Catholic uh, church, uh, this is my target and uh, this is whom I have to contact to be uh, disassociated with the church. And uh, yeah, so, and oh, another update. Uh, I tried to tweet it to the Pope, but from what I see, 
He never replies to any tweets he receives. Um, the Vatican Pope email also doesn't work. And uh, so the only option will be to send it through snail mail. Uh, for those who don't know, um, basically send a sealed letter to the Vatican physically. Which I'm going to do. And I'm probably going to translate this to Portuguese because if uh, the Vatican can't do this, uh, I'll have to uh, ask a, a write to the Bishop of Braga or something like that. So, open letter to the Vatican Pope. I'm writing this letter because I wish to be removed from the church registries or, as many would say, be excommunicated. I can't think of a better honor than that. And yes, it would be a, an honor to be considered an erratic, heretic because it means I'm doing something right. Um, I've had quite a challenging relationship with the Roman Catholic Church. Since I was a child, my mother tried to be, put me through cat, catechism. I didn't have a very good experience from the start. I have been rather inquisitive thing that was not very well tolerated by priests nor the catechistas. And I know my English is not the best in this text here, but uh, I think it's probably better than most people's in the Vatican, so I think it will do. Uh, plus, uh, I purposefully put uh, most references to Christianity and Catholicism in uh, low case letters, so yes. Um, I would question the prayers I was taught. One such instances was about Hail Mary, when they say she is the mother of God. How could a simple Jewish woman be the mother of God? Of course, once I was taught the concept of Trinity, I also rejected it. For those who don't know, Catholics believe that Jesus is God, and Jesus and God are one, and the God, Jesus, whatever nonsense, it never made nonsense, any sense to me. They always said I was dumb, that I couldn't get the concept because I was dumb. No, I couldn't get the concept because the concept is dumb. Um, I also dissected. Um, okay, I also dissected other Christian prayers and occasionally would make observations and questions. Neither the priest nor the catechistas, those that teach uh, their doctrine, would appreciate. This prompted them to put us on long playground outside sessions so that I wouldn't ask questions that would put other kids alert to their brainwashing methods, of course. But that doesn't matter. They were all happy because they didn't have to be there and they could be playing in the playground. Um, I, it would prompt me to dread Katkez and do all my in my power not to go. Because uh, it was... Uh, um, um, they had a policy of listen and, and not ask. Um, you're always wrong. If you don't understand something, it's not because we don't know how to explain it or because the concepts are wrong. It's because you're too dumb to, to know it. Or you're an, an heretic when you get a little older, but um, yeah. I did most of my studying alone up until the First Communion, but I'd occasionally go to Katkez. These were two major issues with my indoctrinators. They wouldn't take my questions, yeah, and they'd reject any criticism I may have had, and I was especially feisty about things I was passionate about, like Easter, that we call Pasqua, likely derived from the Hebrew Pesach. And of course, the, the, there were a lot of issues. This only scratches the surface, for instance. 
I was really impressed when uh, we learned the commandments and, uh, you know, not worshipping images. And then you go to the church, it's all statues, all things that, you know, it's basically breaking the commandments and thing. They were really angry at me for questioning how it was done. And they said that, that those were images, that that wasn't idol worship, which I now know that I was right all along. They just couldn't stand um, anyone criticizing their doctrine, their power, their authority. Uh, so, yes. Um, anyway, because they don't like truth seekers, Soon, their churches will be empty anyway. I was never much fond of Jesus and the whole adoration of Jesus and the Virgin Mary, which made praying especially hard for me because we were encouraged not to directly pray to God, but to pray through intermediaries, usually saints, that drove me crazy. Seriously, if the priests can talk to God, why can't we? Um, but to pray through intermediaries, usually saints, dead people, something that became specially problematic, like I said before, after I learned the Ten Commandments, because not only did I always see that as stupid and pointless, now it had acquired the dimension of breaking fundamental commandments. I felt dirty, and no matter how much I brought it up, I was always dismissed by the catechista and the priest. My mom wouldn't have it either. My mom actually multiple times um, thought I needed an exorcism. Not only my mom, actually a few priests too, but uh, I was never exorcised, thank God. <laughs> But uh, they thought that I denied the church because I needed some form of exorcism. Uh, which wasn't made easy when I started into the whole Anne Rice and vampires thing. Uh, which is kind of funny because uh, if you think a little, uh, their uh, Jesus worship is actually at the root of... Uh, vampirism the, with the whole wine and whatever as uh, the blood of Jesus, whatever nonsense. This can actually be one of the sources of the vampire mythos in uh, Europe. Actually, there are um, predating uh, vampire myths all over the world, but we can't uh, deny that the, the Christian ima ima imagery resembles quite a lot uh, <coughs> Someone broke something. Hang on, I'll be back. Okay, couldn't figure out the source of the noise. Uh, but still, their Catholic imagery is full of pagan uh, rites. I don't know what, where I was, but it doesn't matter. It's about Christianity, it doesn't really matter a lot. I grew, I grew more and more wary of the church and their indoctrination. Nonetheless, I had to stay even after becoming agnostic atheist on behalf of my mother because she'd accused me of being possessed whenever I rejected the church. Still, as I was saying a few lines before, one of the major incompatibil incompatibilities I had with the Catholic Christian doctrine was the whole nonsense surrounding the appropriation of Pesach and how they corrupted the Jewish holiday. Now I learn that they went much farther and corrupted almost every single Jewish holiday and made it their own pagan version. With their nonsense, which I realized after my return to Judaism is far deeper than I had realized as a child or even as a teen as I was exploring religions. And now, um, return is in quotes here because even though I have a lot of suspicions of Jewish ancestry, uh, kind of strength, strength, strengthened by 
uh, my grandmother and uh, all that. I don't have certainty, so yeah. Okay, well, I kind of have a certainty, but um, only for genetic testing can I be sure. And even with genetic testing, uh, you know, it's been 500 years, uh, there may be very few Jewish genes left in, although my city has a higher percentage of Jewish ancestry, uh, we can never be sure. I have to explain. Ever since I was young, my two favorite books from the Bible were in this order, the scroll of Esther and the Exodus. They were always very dear to me. I never quite understood why, but they felt like the most special and meaningful accounts in the Bible. That is the main reason why I would argue, or rather try to debate, with my katechista, because she'd tell us the reasons for celebra celebrating Easter, Pasqua, Pesach were all due to Jesus sacrifice on the behalf of mankind. That never sat well with me. As we all know, Easter, Pascha, Pesach, or in modern Jewish English terms, Passover, was about how the Jewish people was guided by God out of Egypt. And again, I mention Easter because this is in the context of Catholicism, so I'm using uh, the Christian ter terms. And then I use the Jewish terms. In Portuguese, the Christian and the Jewish terms are the same. So, uh, yeah. The reason why we celebrate it is because how important it is and how it reaffirmed our alliance with God. I was always disappointed how not once Christians mentioned the Exodus around Passover or Easter for them. One of the most important events in the Bible is completely ignored, as are all other Jewish holidays. Not only that, all the symbolism of Seder, all Passover customs are corrupted and associated with Jesus. The reason why Christians prepare a lamb for this holiday is because they call Jesus the sacrificial lamb of God. Please, tell me this is a joke. No, it's not a joke, and to this day, I don't understand what does Jesus have to do with lambs. No one ever explained that to me, and I can't figure out. And my theory is appropriation of Jewish mythos and paganization of Judaism. Only explanation for that lamb imagery. They even stole all the significance from Passover. Of course, I knew that we ate lamb because in reality, it had nothing to do with Jesus, but with the fact that in order to save his people, God sent various instructions, guidelines, on how they tried to escape from Egypt. In one such and most significant act was the ritual slaughter of rams, lamb, and the anointing of the houses where Jews dwelt as a mark signaling God's chosen will people so that God would spare their firstborns in all the houses marked with blood. And this was crucial. And to this day, we have the fast of the firstborn. And this, okay. okay. Religion interlude, because uh, I was on Chabad the other day. The other day. When I say the other day, it means weeks ago. And uh, I wanted to know more about the fast of the firstborn because I was not sure whether women were bound to it or whether it was a male-only thing because usually firstborn in most uh, religious aspects re refer to the male first ch uh, child. But um, according to Chabad, this can refer to males, both males and females. And there is a curious reference that uh, in houses where they didn't have children, someone was also affected. So the eldest member of the household also needs to fast on uh, the fast of the firstborn to uh, um, 
kind of uh, thank God for sparing uh, them from uh, uh, the, um, the curse that killed the firstborns in all of Egypt uh, that uh, were in houses that weren't anointed with uh, the blood signaling that people uh, were following God. So, uh, because uh, rabbi rabbis assumed that all the houses were affected, childless households, in childless households, even if the head of the household or the oldest member of the household is not a firstborn, uh, those uh, were, um, were uh, affected by the curse of the firstborn because um, you know that's that's that uh, although nowadays there is uh, usually in synagogues they have a celebration uh, that exempts them from the fast and so lots of men and the women firstborns go into the synagogue and uh, because uh, there is a loophole they can avoid that fast. Uh, so, I already read the entire paragraph, right? No one such a Yes, of course, Christians couldn't let this without paganizing it and corrupting it, associating it with Jesus. There is much more that can be said about the Christian doctrine, which I questioned until the moment I definitely defected from Christianity. Other reasons were my mom's overt religiosity. Trust me, you wouldn't want to deal with that. Uh, hang on, where was I? Priests trying to touch me inappropriately. And uh, here I'm going to give a side note because um, uh, when uh, I was 12, uh, this happened more than once uh, uh, by different priests, but uh, the most traumatic one was in Fatima, where I went with my mom and my grandma and the priest tried and I was in a confessionary. First and foremost, I never saw the necessity of a confessionary. I mean, why do I need to confess my sins to a priest when I can do that directly to God? And again, this was a concept that never you know, quite fit in my head. And even for my first communi communion, I refused to go and talk to a priest because I thought, you know what, why can't I... Uh, ask forgiveness to God and God knows what I did better than a man and can judge me better than a man of course that's heresy but I was allowed to take the first communion without confessing my sins to a priest because you know they knew me they already knew me I was a trouble troublesome child in uh, the Catholic Church uh, but uh, when I was 12, my grandma went to Fatima. Oh, and I need to make a video about the Fatima Oak hoax. I already briefly mentioned it in another video. And my hair here is making look like I have armpit hair, but uh, well, <laughs> I don't, I don't. You can see that I don't. Uh, anyway, uh, my... Grandma went to Fatima, my mom and uh, the priest, uh, um, I went into confession, I ended up not confessing anything and uh, he tried to put his hand up my skirt, I, I ran away and uh, I told my mom, my mom didn't believe me, she, she called me a blasphemer and whatever and that uh, Priests are holy, they are doing God's work. And she only believed me when my grandmother said the same thing because he also tried to put his hand on her legs. So, 
Yeah. Um, this was, this was probably when I convinced my mother to let me completely cut my ties to the Catholic Church. Although, as a condition, I had to take uh, uh, moral Catholic classes in school. But uh, better than going to cat catechism and other things. So, you know, I was already taking those classes and... Uh, okay. At least I, 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 I just have to keep up with those classes, so <laughs> better than uh, going through uh, catechism until whatever. Still, my mom tried to keep me a Christian by buying me Christian cartoons and saints. She did. To this day, she still will buy little figurines. Through all this, my main problem was the cognitive dissonance I saw people who were Christians had in regards to the Bible. To me, either the Bible was fake or the New Testament could never be divinely inspired as it contradicted so much of the Old Testament. I could never accept its authenticity as the continuation of the Old Testament. You have to know that uh, when I started noticing these patterns, I didn't have contact with the Torah. Was I started reading the Bible before I was 15, which was around the age I started reading the Torah and all of the other religious books. Especially the Pauline letters. <laughs> Please burn them. And Christians won't shut up about them, especially the Jehovah's Witnesses. They build their entire doctrine around Paul of Tarsus. Thereon, I lost complete faith in religions. And here I have two side notes. First one, I couldn't conciliate the fact that they claimed that Mary was a virgin forever. And in the Bible, it is mentioned that Mary had more children besides Jesus. Also, I never believed that she was a virgin, and uh, that about I never believed in the angel uh, coming to her and uh, that nonsense. But even if it had be, been true, she isn't. She couldn't be a virgin because she had children. And Catholics, oh gosh, they they have so much apologetics for that. They tried to pretend that Joseph was married before Mary, although it is never mentioned in any place that he had a prior wife. They uh, say that uh, brothers was uh, metaphorical. When you can see that it is, those are his biological brothers. But, uh, you know, cognitive dissonance. And then the other part... Um, the part that I've lost faith in all religions was also because my mom kept on telling me, if you don't believe in Jesus, you don't believe in God. And, you know, I started telling myself, maybe she's right. Maybe she is right. So that's why I wasn't enough to completely deny Catholicism. I had to deny religion altogether to be able to get out of that environment. And trust me, now that I'm back and I reconnected with God, she's trying to get me to Catholicism all over again. Oh, how do you how do you know my mom again? As I grew, my mother always tried to bring me back to church, mostly failing at it. Even when I conceded, I was never truly there. I was always a truth seeker, so I studied a lot of religions. Sadly, Christianity is so deceitful that in their moral subject in school, they talked quite extensively about other religions, but always made sure not to mention, uh, always made sure to only mention Judaism in passing, brushing over it and giving a misleading idea of it. So, of course, at the time, I couldn't connect the dots and figure out that I was Jewish all along. 
Bill can't forget how we went on a field trip to Lisbon. He took us to a mosque, a Hindu temple, showed us a lot of their practices, but they failed to bring us to the synagogue in Lisbon where we would be able to learn from a rabbi what Judaism really is. Looking back now, that must have been intentional so that those of us who may have Jewish ancestry couldn't trace back our origins or people who may see through Christian propaganda and may want to find the truth couldn't find it. And again, I must stress that these field trips were not with the entire school. It was only with the Christian subject. Uh, so uh, it wasn't related with history teachers. It was uh, with the Christian sur subject that we had. Around that time, I read the Bible, Torah, Quran, and other religious books. Still couldn't believe in Christianity and the wrong notions of Judaism thought by Christians kept me from connecting and rekindling my relationship with God and my ancestors. As much as I knew it was a lie, it took me years to realize I was Jewish. There seems to be an attempt at keeping Judaism dormant concealed from us by Christian educators. There's clearly still some inbuilt anti-Semitism where regardless of accuracy, the perspective of Jews in Christian moral subject in school is still very much anti-Judaism. Jews are seen as barbaric, and this is uh, really true. Where was I? Okay. People who caused an innocent man to die, even though the Romans are benevolent violently mentioned and of course Romans are benevolently mentioned because they were the heads of Christianity and they molded it to their agenda so they needed to demonize Jews and they used the Catholic Church to do it uh. there's Clearly still some inbuilt anti-Semitism where, regardless of accuracy, the perspective of Jews in Christian moral subject in school is still very much anti-Judaism. Jews are seen as barbaric people who caused an innocent man to die, even though the Romans are benevolently mentioned. These subtle and yet powerful indoctrinating anti-Semitic ideas plant an anti-Jewish sentiment in the general population, a sense of either hate or apathy. Many express very misleading ideas about Jews planted from an early age by the church and its propaganda tools, both in schools and katkes. And it's not only there, you know, the, the church, the, the Roman Catholic Church molded the European culture so much that anti-Semitism is deeply enrooted in European culture. Despite this propaganda, I am blessed by the fact that I was born in one of the most beautiful and unique cities in the world, Tumar, Portugal. Occasionally, our history teachers would take us to visit the vast and rich variety of monuments we have in our city. Often, they'd overlook the synagogue, but I still got to visit it five times in school trips. It's hard to explain the feeling I'd get every time we'd visit the synagogue. Sadly, our synagogue is just a relic. We don't have a rabbi or anyone to carry on the Jewish legacy. So, without a rabbi actively combating Christian influence over crypto-Jewish families, Judaism and crypto-Judaism is dying out in my country, especially since the Fatima hoax that cemented Catholic influence over Portugal especially in my region. Uh, now I have to say two things about this because uh, um, before I met uh, the person that made me realize I was Jewish for two years, I'd go to the synagogue, I'd look inside, I wanted to go in but never had the courage 
I don't know how to describe this feeling. I, I'd peek inside. When I saw someone coming to greet me, I'd run, just like a kid. I can't explain that, but I was driven there, and that's why this is... It's, it's weird to explain. I just go to the door. Ah, oh, gosh, so stupid, so stupid. It's like I wanted to get in, but for whatever reason, I couldn't. I didn't have the courage. And now I know that uh, the synagogue was calling me. I just didn't know why. It was calling to me. It was, you know, it was calling to my soul. Or my soul wanted to go there, but I didn't know why. And uh, yeah, I got scared and I always ran away. And I did that for over a year until um, we stopped going to Tamar that often. But uh, every time I went to Tamar, I'd always go to, this, uh, to the synagogue and lurk inside and never quite having the courage of getting in. And now about the other note, the Fatima hoax, I'm really going to make a video about this. I, make, I think I made a post entry about it, my blog, I'm not sure. Uh, because it was around this region, very close to my city, and even one of my great-grandmothers saw that, and uh, that's why my mom is such a Catholic, because she believes in it. Uh, they made the hoax so well that lots of people believe in it. And uh, I think that lots of crypto-Jewish families lost their connection with their Judaism, when uh, the dictatorship and all those, uh, you know, because it is powerful uh, that when everyone roams to a place and believes that something mystic is happening there, um, yeah, so that hoax really changed the, the shape of my country forever. I'm very well aware that this was a large introduction, but I wanted to lay out all the reasons for wanting to be permanently disassociated with the church. Little did I know that I'd go in much deeper and less friendly detail in later paragraphs. I want to cut every and all ties I have with the Catholic Church. Knowing what I know about me, my past and my ancestors, it became even more crucial for me to do so. I couldn't live with my conscience after all the damage caused by the church to thousands of Jews across the world and their nefarious anti-Semitic doctrine. Furthermore, I want nothing with a cult that viciously creates new idols to extract money from their naive followers. That part I added later, not in the original text. Uh, the part about uh, extract money, that part was added. Christianity goes against all the teachings from the Torah, and it's an institution that was used to perpetuate the Roman Empire's power and an attempt at attracting both Jews and pagans under a unique religion to control them. Just like the circus games, just like all that, uh, you know, vile and so it's still the same thing. I can't be associated with a religion that twists the scriptures in self-serving self, in self -serving ways to prove their messiah and justify their power. I can't compatriate with the distortion of Jewish principles and prophecies. <laughs> oh, this is quite a mouthful. Moreover, given the suffering of all Jews since the inception of Christianity, when Christians would persecute Jews and use them as scapegoats, accusing them of dreadful things, Wherever they went, Jews were rounded up and persecuted by Christians. <laughs> From the beginning, where were I? Hold on. This moves sometimes. From the beginning of Christianity to modern age, the root of all modern anti Semitism is the Greco Roman civilization and their Frankenstein monster hybrid Christianity. The deep and rooted European anti-Semitism can be traced back to the Greco-Roman days 
and later Christianity as the heir to the Roman Empire adopted all the Greco-Roman anti-Semitic prejudice, stereotypes and lies perpetuating them all throughout Europe. Moreover, how many times do I use moreover? Gosh, I really need to stop using it. Really, I really abuse of this word. Okay, I need to change my style. Moreover, we can blame the Christian Catholic doctrine for all persecutions to Jews since Romans became Christians. I really hate to repeat myself. I should have other synonyms for this word. From the blood libel that is still perpetuated by this Pope under fake pretenses of solidarity towards Palestinians, to all sorts of conspiracy theories, the anti-Semitic legacy lives on. And this is going to be explored more in depth in, le in depth, depth in later paragraphs. But seriously, this Pope is so anti-Semitic and he pretends that he is not, but come on. He is friends with Mahmoud Hamoud or whatever, Abbas, one of the worst, 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 uh, you know, genocidal maniacs. He, I swear, if he had charisma, he'd be, gosh, so powerful. Thank God he's a freaking idiot and doesn't get as much power as he wants to, still gets too much power. Despite the separation between Orthodox Church and Catholic Church early on, the negative anti-Semitic impact of the doctrine is imbued in all Europeans. Even Jews themselves self-hate because they were raised in a Christian-centric world. Thus, a lot of diaspora Jews will perpetuate all the lies and deceit stemming from deep structural and rooted anti-Semitism. This anti-Semitism created the conditions so all hateful ideologies in the world towards Jews could begin, from Roman circus games to Inquisition and later on Nazism. Yes, I'm going there. One of the reasons why Templars were dismantled was because the church suspected them of co covered Judaism, according to some theories. Yes, although uh, Templars were part of the church, uh, there were Jewish Templars, and uh, it is believed that, uh, and this is something I learned in my city, that is one of their last strongholds where our uh, governments, um, our kings, converted them into a new order to preserve them because my country does that a lot. Forced converted Jews to Christianity so they wouldn't have to send them, uh, you know, to expel them from the country. Uh, and they converted uh, Templars into a new order so they wouldn't have to persecute them. There's a lot of that in my country. So technically my country wasn't... Um, that anti-Semitic and actually they had some policies to protect Jews. However, they were very much under the control of the church and the church has influenced the country to take measures that the country would do contradicted but would also try to avoid. For instance, they remade and renamed the Templars into another name. And it is said that the Templars Yes, there are a lot of um, dirty practices in Templars, but there is also the current that defends that because they had been in the Holy Land and uh, had Jewish ideas, they were accused of doing all those initi initiation rites and sorcery, and that's why they were persecuted because they were uh, practicing covered Judaism, 
and um so yeah that's um that's part of it and again these are theories some scholars agree with them others won't agree so uh this is all speculation although there may be some proofs because some of the founding templars were of jewish ancestry uh, Okay, all European persecutions of Jews are the responsibility of the Catholic Okay, I'm, I have a, a Jews here, I shouldn't say, of the Catholic Protestant anti-Semitism See, Martin Luther also stems from centuries of anti-Semitic Christianity the Catholic Church not only perpetuated the anti-Semitic ideas that would give rise to all Jewish persecutions and actively participated in some, if not most. It is not only responsible for Nazism due to the centuries of Christian brainwashing of Europe and their anti-Semitism that is put into every European, whether religious or not, from the cradle. It is not, they didn't disavow Nazi Germany, they actively supported it, signing treaties with the Nazi regime and later on harboring Nazi war criminals when the war was over. However much they may deny it, the Catholic Church is responsible for the Holocaust, both by originating the ideologies and stereotypes lies that would create a fertile ground for Jew hating policies to be applied, but by actively participating in them, yes, even after the war, they hid and protected Nazis. And uh, yes, the church is always on the wrong side of history. To this day, the church remains very much anti-Semitic and will support any ideology that opposes Judaism. This pope openly defends Islamic terrorists while condemning the state of Israel for defending itself. Any new hate group that emerges against Judaism or the state of Israel will receive full support from the Catholic Church. Let us forget how the Catholic Church praises and worships Mahmoud Abbas, considering him an angel of peace. Seriously! That murderer, that oh, that Hitler is literally Hitler with less charisma and less followers. Considering him an angel of peace, tell me that this is a fair institution. I ask, how can anyone? want to associate with the Catholic Church when their Pope actively promotes terrorists. So, he doesn't care about his Christian subjects killed at the hands of Palestinians, so long as he is supporting a regime that actively persecutes and kills Jews. He signed a treaty with Abbas further showing his support for terrorism and murder of innocent Jewish children and families. This proves nothing has changed since ancient times. The church is anti-Jewish, is an anti-Jewish hate propaganda machine, and I want nothing to do with it. The anti-Semitism in the Christian Bible is overbearing. No self-respecting human would accept that much less if that human may have Jewish ancestors like a great majority of people in this area. Sadly, most people don't even read the Bible and they don't know what they're listening to. They go to the mess and they hear whatever the priests want to tell them and they believe in something that is nothing, looks remotely nothing like what Christianity actually is and still they get in church telling them that Jews are evil they killed Jesus 
they did it out of spite. When we all know that Romans did it. I can't condone that after years and years of inquisition, stripping out Jews of every human right and forced expulsion from their homes, their countries, even from Israel, someone decides that I am a Christian for the single fact that I was baptized against my will. I never want to have anything to do with Christian movements, much less the Catholic Church. It is very insulting to me that after what the Inquisition did in my city, Tamar, ransacking everything and everyone, and I shall one day share one of the accounts that says that uh, our city was very poor because the rich, richest and most respectable men were um, imprisoned and uh, pillaged because they were Jewish the most respectable and notable people in our city. Uh, so basically, ransacking everything and everyone, arresting half the population for the, si the sin of being Jews, and stealing their property, expelling some, forced converting others, that no matter what I do, just because I was baptized and considered a Christian Catholic for the rest of my life, I don't care about the Catholic Church and what I want every single of my ties to its severed. Just because they dumped a little bit of water in my head, completely corrupting the concept of a mikvah, doesn't mean that I'm a Catholic. I demand a written paper saying, I hereby, whatever the Catholic bureaucrat responsible of whatever section declared that an Ekaterina Bovisovich is no longer a member of the Catholic Church and is excommunicated for heresy and professing the Jewish faith. That, that's what I want, basically. In the name of all my ancestors of diverse ethnicities that were forced to convert to Christianity, because let's not forget that the locals of the, the Iberian Peninsula were not Christians. They were either pagan, Jewish, they were not Christians. Uh, in the name of all my ancestors of diverse ethnicities that were forced to convert to Christianity, I am taking a stand and removing our bloodline for me from this perilous institution that to this day perpetuates dangerous notions about Judaism and Jews that through the power of European culture is propagated even amongst pagans, atheists, agnostics and Protestants. We need to take a stand against the parasitic institution that is the Church of Rome. I renounce to all its saints that worshipping cult and I renounce to Jesus the fake prophet of doom. The Catholic Church Christianity has oppressed Jews for over 2,000 years. It's one of the most toxic currents of thought in the entire world. Not only that, it's a complete aberration and mosaic of appropriated pagan rites beliefs, polluting Judaism and insulting God. It's time to get out of this nasty institution and I urge all descendants of crypto Jews to do the same. I know it is hard. Many of you were forced to live in Christian environments and raised in Catholicism. But here's the good news. You can learn the truth. You can learn it. By reading the Torah, even the Old Testament of the Christian Bible, will tell you what you need to know. If you need more help, go to Jews for Judaism, and I'm going to leave the link below. They help a great deal with fighting Christian propaganda. We need to take a stand against those that oppressed our censors or our ancestors and deprived us of our relationship with God and forced us into unwilling paganism and idol worshiping. Many of us felt from a young age the repulsion for Christianity. It's in our blood, our ancestry. We need to do something. We need to show the church that they no longer have power of, over the Bnei Anusim and stay away from Messianic Jews. They are spreading the same lies. Okay. So this is basically... Uh, 
And since this is an open letter, I'm uh, addressing certain groups that may read this and leaving a message not only to the Pope, but to other people that may relate to this. Um, if you're a Christian, try to seek the truth, go back to the Torah and stop following, following an anti-Semitic religion. They lied to you, and very likely your ancestors were forced to convert to Christianity, whether they were Jewish or pagan. I urge every Maya Muslim, whether having already converted to Judaism or not, to take a stand and ask the Catholic Church to remove your names from their dreadful registry of who is a Catholic. Your ancestors were forced to become Christians against their will, the best thing you can do is regain control over your bloodline, even if this is merely symbol symbolic. It will show the Catholic Church that they can't keep Hashem's children in the darkness forever. And I'm sure somehow it will dignify and purify your soul. You can commit to Hashem and show your love for Hashem by rejecting the ideology that killed and tortured so many of Hashem's people. And now, the Pope. To the Pope, I say, I am sick of all your church's lies. I am sick of your anti-Semitic pro-Palestinian propaganda. I cannot be associated with an institution that is spreading and favoring terrorists who every day kill Jewish fathers, mothers, rabbis, and children for the sin, sin of being Jewish. By voicing a pro-Palestinian stance, an anti-Israel stance, Pope Francis shows that centuries of anti-Semitism have not died out within the Catholic Church. They still perpetuate the blood libel and don't recognize the right of the Jewish people to exist. I'm not a Catholic, never was, and will never be, much less under the current pap papacy that supports abortion and all things that go against God. Never has a Pope been so anti-God as this one and his pro-terrorist stance is inadmissible. Someone who thwarts Israel's right to exist and defend itself against terrorists doesn't have the right to determine what happens to my soul. Someone who supports Abbas's murderous terrorist agenda shouldn't be a religious leader in any religion. But then again, this proves yet again the fact that anti-Semitism is virulently embedded in the core DNA of Christianity. My soul wants to join the Jewish people, and before I can do that, I want to cleanse my soul of every impure associations with the murderous Catholic Church. To this day, the Church is causing damage to thousands of Jews worldwide. The simple existence of the New Testament is a threat to Israel and the Jewish people for its anti-Semitic content. Then you have centuries of oppression by Christians, Romans, and their Frankenstein hybrid, the Roman Catholic Church. This last century was one of the most tragic centuries for Judaism. So, thousands of crypto Jews were forced to finally break completely their ties to Judaism, as various dictatorships forced them to learn Christianity in schools. They could no longer escape the church, because the church invaded schools. So in two generations, two generations, most crypto Jews in Portugal lost their ties with their ancestors and Judaism. Some, like my grandmother, still kept some Jewish habits. Small, but enough that someone who starts keeping kosher and becoming an observant Jew can recognize, or a born Jew can recognize. For all this, I want my name and all my ties to the Catholic Church revoked. I don't want to support this terrorist organization anymore, nor do I want any ties or connections to it. I demand that the Pope or any of his lackeys remove me from, removes me from the Catholic Church permanently. I was never made to be a Catholic, and I can't support the most anti-Semitic institution in history, especially considering this new Pope is actively supporting anti-Israel, anti-Semitic propaganda and wishes death on Jews. He doesn't speak on the behalf of Jews murdered brutally by infiltrating Arab terrorists and perpetuates lies that give Nazis, leftist anti-Semites, and Arabs excuses to hate on Jews and murder them. Like his predecessor before him, he 
predecessors before him, he is doing his job of denying Jews the right to exist, denying Israel the right to exist. In honor of my ancestors and all Jews that died or were tortured as a direct consequence of Christianity and its spoof-offs, as well as the imbued anti-Semitic mentality spread by the Roman Empire and Catholic Church, I demand that my name be removed and excommunicated by the Catholic Church. If you want, I can say erratic things, but I demand to be excommunicated from the Church. So first, I deny the legitimacy of the Catholic Church. I deny the Pope's representation on earth of God. I deny that Jesus could be the Messiah. I reject the virginity of Mary. Mary was an adulterer. Jesus was born out of wedlock and could never be the Messiah. The Trinity doctrine is the biggest joke in the history of mankind and conflicts with the Catholic claim of monotheism. Furthermore, it proves that Catholics do not worship the Jewish God. They worship a composite amal amalgam of pagan gods with the appropriation of Judaism as an attempt to incorporate and control both pagans and Jews. All Catholics are idol worshippers and break the most fundamental commandments. Catholicism is idolatry. If this is not enough to get my name taken off the official rolls of Catholics, I'm ready to go to the next Sunday Mass, take the Eucharistic wafer and step on it in front of everyone in the church. Keep your status and let me out of this. I never asked to be Christian. Sign no longer your pawn, your pawn, and a Katerina Wojtovich, proud future Jew. So that's it. Uh, that's uh, my letter to the Pope. Whoa, almost an hour. Um, and um, I have to say, I did have to take out a lot of, of things that I had written, uh, but uh, this is, um, yeah, that's basically what I want to say. <sighs> also, the Catholic Church even goes against the fundamental Noahide laws, not just all the commandments in the Torah, it even goes against the commandments for uh, non-Jews. So that's a thing to take in mind for a religion that claim, claims to be worshipping the same gods of Abraham, Moses. They, they basically are anti-Judaism and go against everything that Judaism stands for. So that's it for this video. I really wanted to, to read this uh, because uh, I think it's one of the most important things I've ever written. Um, sadly, I wanted to keep this short so I didn't go in all detail about everything that I think and all the complex feelings and resentment that I have uh, for the Catholic Church. So, lies and uh, their fake, uh, how do you call it, ecumenic uh, stance, when all they do is support every ideology that will consider Jews uh, a plague. Um, come on, they, 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 support, uh, they support Abbas that pays terrorists to kill Jews. The more the merrier. I can't be associated with a religion that calls one of the biggest murderers in history an angel of peace. And I urge everyone, you don't have to be Jewish, you can be just an Ohide, but please get out of the church. Anyway, this is my video for today. I hope you liked it, and if someone is in the same situation, I would like to hear from you. So goodbye, and I'll see you in the next video.